Hello, everybody, and welcome to another uh, version of the Paso Vivo's Cooking Kitchen for Kids. Uh, today, we're going to be doing an Italian frittata, and um, because we're cooking for kids, we're not going to call it that. We're going to call it breakfast pizza. All of a sudden, everybody wants to eat it. Uh, I've noticed that if you start adding pizza in my house to any end of a sentence, the kids go crazy for it. So um, we're going to go ahead and cheat a little bit. And um, for the rest of us, the frittata is a fantastic and delicious snack, lunch, breakfast, brunch, dinner uh, meal. So you'll be able to use this in, um, in many different forms. For the kiddos, it is a lot of fun to make because it's pretty easy. It's kind of everybody in the pool, stir it up, cook it up. So simple to pull together. Um, I've done a lot of the food prepping beforehand. So I've sliced my tomatoes and that sort of stuff. So as I'm chatting, go ahead and kind of join me in slicing everything up and dividing everything up. Um, I'm Eleanor. Hi. <laughs> I always forget that part. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. Uh, it's beautiful outside. It's not a bazillion degrees and it's one of those Fridays that just makes you excited about the weekend. So um, I'm going to go through the ingredients and then we'll move on to pulling it together. All right, so we've got the basil olive oil. So the basil olive oil is something that we used last week in our cooking uh, kitchen for kids. So that was on those berry pizzas that we did last week for uh, 4th of July. Uh, again, it's one of those uh, olive oils that you will be using over and over and over again. You'll be seeing it a lot in different recipes uh, quite often. Um, the distilleries we've been working with have been using it in cocktails. We've been using it with um, other chefs. Uh, I reminded you to use this with sliced strawberries last week. It's delicious. Uh, so we're starting off with that basil olive oil. Uh, a half cup of onion diced, two cups of spinach. I just did a grab, a grab from a bag, and you can try to shove it into a, a cup, but that's, yeah, just grab from the bag. And it's around, give or take, two cups. One cup of cherry tomatoes halved. So I did the math, or did the counting, 24 cherry tomatoes. So if you're working with a kiddo, um, go ahead, give them the container and they can start counting out 24 cherry tomatoes and then you can do the slicing. Kids, put down the cherry tomato. Go wash your hands. I saw what you did with those hands, it's not, not okay. Yeah, I saw you with the worms. Um, anybody else's kids touch gross things? Uh, yeah, so go wash your hands. Same rules apply as always. Please make sure that you outsource the dangerous stuff to your adult. So any slicing, any dicing, any fire, put the adults in charge, okay? Kiddos, you guys just do the fun stuff, okay? All right, so back to the recipe. We've got one tablespoon of spicy Italian blend. This is one of those blends that people have fallen in love with. There's a little bit of a cult following for. You can't find it, uh, I, as far as I know, you can't find it anywhere else except for with us. And uh, it just makes everything have that beautiful Italian flavor to it. The seasonings that we get are, are just so beautiful, so fresh, so well made. I can't say enough about the people who pull them together. Uh, okay, 10 eggs whisked. That will also be a kiddo focused um, job. So if you have one counting right now, you can have, I don't know how many kids you have at home. Maybe you have eight, I don't know. So if you have, pull one of the eight and have them start breaking up the eggs 10 eggs in a bowl, and then we're gonna smush them up, which is great. Before you smush them up, look for cracked eggs and eggshells in the bowl, because if you're working with kids, that's part of the course. All right, so uh, two thirds of a cup of milk. Doesn't matter if it's skim milk or whole milk. I would say even almond milk will do, as long as it's not vanilla. Uh, so yeah, as long as you've got um, some sort of milk. Uh, you could even do ha a half and half or uh, a like a whipping cream. Um, it's just going to make it heavier and creamier. One teaspoon of the roasted garlic sea salt. So I often when if you've come and seen me and done a tasting with me, you recognize this pairing of the spicy Italian blend with that roasted garlic sea salt because 
that roast, uh, that spicy, spicy Italian does not have any salt with it, which is great if you're watching your sodium because it has so much flavor. But if you do want a little added kick, that uh, roasted garlic sea salt is beautiful mixed in together. So if you're doing just a, a dipping pairing at some point, if you're showing off to your friends that you have some fantastic oils and seasonings in front of you, those two go really well with that basil olive oil and a bottle of wine. Um, all right, the and a half teaspoon of, of pepper, just a grinder pepper will do. Um, three fourths of a cup of shredded mozzarella, half a cup or a quarter cup of Parmesan, two tablespoons of balsam uh, aged balsamic. So that's this guy. And that's gonna be to drizzle over at the very end. So that's gonna be something that you can even put on the table. Um, don't store it with it on there, but have it there. And I'll say that the same for the basil olive oil, the same for the roasted garlic sea salt. Uh, yes, there's a question. Just a comment. Okay. Thank you for having the recipe posted on the board. <laughs> Thank you guys for suggesting it. We are trying to kind of uh, streamline this. And as always, just like with our club, just like with our products, we listen to you guys, our customers, and we want to make sure that we hear your feedback and we work with it because you know what you want and we're here to give it to you. So there you go. Uh, so absolutely, and I'm really glad that you're following along today. Um, two tablespoons of aged balsamic, this guy, this guy, and I'd suggest that roasted garlic sea salt. Put that on the table when you serve this so people can help and play as well, so it's kind of a hands-on deal. Um, this, this is the first time we're flipping this over. This is one thing that I don't know how I missed, but uh, when I emailed the recipe, I forgot the chopped garlic. So you just said that, and here I am, you know, messing with you. Chopped garlic, if I, I use the, the jar stuff, so you can do like a, a what is it? A, yeah, just a tablespoon of, of that chopped up stuff, the jarred one, or a real chopped garlic. And then I said a half cup of pepperoni, but then again, this is what you guys are making. When I made it, I just plopped some on the top then it looks very pizza-like and therefore kids will be all over it. There you go. So this is what the final product looks like. That's a cheat. That's supposed to come out of the oven at the end and you go, wow, that was amazing how you did that. Magic. It's already there. Um, okay, so the pepperoni is there or any type of Italian sausage or um, meat that you'd like to put on it. Uh, uh, bacon would do just fine. That's up to you guys. That's kind of optional the pepperoni was kind of a nod to the kiddos. Um, I'll flip this back over. Actually, I'll plop this down so that we can get to cooking. There we go. So let's start. Preheat the oven to 350. Remember, that's one of my pet peeves <laughs> to like go through a whole recipe and then find out my oven was supposed to be toasty hot. All right, so go ahead, head over to your oven, turn it on, and come on back to me. Uh, while you do, I'll tell you a fun story. So while I was grocery shopping for the cherry tomatoes, you know how they come in that fun plastic thing? Unless you grow your own. Um, and if you do, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> I grocery shop for them. They grow in the stores for us. And um, my kiddo decided to help me load the cart after buying the container of cherry tomatoes and hucked it into the cart. And the plastic just popped right open. And it was a cherry tomato explosion all over the register area. So I'm sure you guys feel me, if you have kiddos, whether you've decided to claim them or you're just borrowing them for the, the day, uh, if you have little ones around, I'm sure that speaks to your heart because <laughs> that's just a daily event, uh, stuff like that. You have to be on your toes and you also have to have a sense of humor. So that's all part of this as well. Um, preheat the oven, start whisking those eggs together with the milk, the salt, the pepper, the spicy Italian, and the mozzarella cheese. So we're putting everybody in the pool right now. So we've got our eggs. <laughs> I would dip them to show you, but I'm pretty sure they'd end up on my toes. So you're gonna have to take my word for it. There are eggs in here, and I'm gonna start whisking them. Um, again, this is a very uh, kiddo-friendly job to do because they really like mushing them. The whisking part, this whole thing isn't, uh, it might, might be a little advanced, but the smushing the eggs is, is a favorite. So once you have 
the eggs whisk up, then you're gonna be taking the milk, and the milk goes in. There we go. And we're taking the salt. So that is that roasted garlic sea salt. It's beautiful. If you haven't played with it yet and you ordered it for this, take a sniff of it right now. It's not that harsh garlic smell that comes with a raw garlic. It is this sweet, beautiful, aromatic smell that comes when you roast the garlic. And you're like, oh, I could just eat this plain. Uh, as long as everybody around me is eating it too, so we all have the same breath. All right, so the garlic salt is going in. Let's see, what else is going in there? Oh, that spicy Italian blend. Okay, so this is what makes it, and it looks like you've just put in a lot, um, but it is a perfect amount. Those eggs get big, they kind of widen up, and it's the perfect amount to get that kind of pizza flavor throughout all. So I did some research because I was trying to figure out what the difference is between a frittata and an omelet. And it turns out a frittata, everything is cooked inside, whereas an omelet, every, it's folded into. So the frittata is like a savory pie. Um, and what's nice about that is that you can eat it warm or cold. So we are basically meal prepping for the next week. You're welcome. You're, you're, you can find a good book and relax for, for here on out because this, just a slice, you can eat it cold, you can eat it warm, and you're good to go. You've kind of got a couple meals set up for yourself or for the kiddos. All right, mozzarella going in. What is an Italian recipe without mozzarella? I don't know. So we've got those guys in. Okay, call me on it. Got pepper, we need the pepper, and we've got this adorable pepper grinder here. And that's just, we're just eyeballing it. Uh, my kiddos, if they bite into one little piece of pepper, the whole dish is discounted because one piece was spicy. So um, do that as, kind of eyeball it. Alrighty, so we've got the eggs, the milk, the salt, the pepper, the spicy Italian, and the mozzarella cheese all here. Now we're going to go on over to the cooktop. We're going to heat up the basil olive oil uh, over medium heat, and then we're going to get all of our veggies and toss those in. Keep in mind, this is going to be something that transfers from the top of the oven inside, from the, from the cooktop to the oven. So you need a skillet that's going to be oven safe. I use this cast iron because it is everything friendly. I will say it is 9,000 pounds, and the minute that you put in 10 eggs and all the veggies, it is very heavy. The first time that I tried out frittatas and tried to single-handedly put it into the oven, I may or may not have poured it into, into the oven. Um, so, uh, <laughs> word to the wise, use two hands. <laughs> um, make sure that you have a couple of pot holders when you take it out so that you're not putting that weight on one single wrist because it is really heavy. Okay. <laughs> here to take care of your health as well as everything else. Okay, so we've got this whisked up. I'm going to turn over here and we're going to do a little bit of the cooking on the stove top. going to uh, keep everything from sticking to the pan and it's also what's going to give that nice basil, basil flavor through everything. If you're looking at me and saying, you guys have really great extra virgin olive oil, why are we cooking with it? I heard you're not supposed to. That is an old wives tale. Uh, you can cook with extra virgin olive oil. In fact, the higher quality of the olive oil, the higher the smoke point on the olive oil. So. These guys, all when you go into that tasting room and you're tasting all four of our extra virgin olive oils, those Evos, um, and you're tasting all of the flavored oils, these all have a smoke point of 425. You can cook with them, you can bake with them, you can dip them, use them for salads, you can deep fry with them. So, yes, this is not 
I, I, they're, you know, all of Italy isn't rolling their eyes and groaning right now. This is okay to do. And it still keeps that flavor because as I spoke about last week with our basil, we are doing oil to oil. We're not infusing any of our oils. Uh, so we're doing oil to oil to get that flavor. So that flavor is going to stay there. Yes, is there a question? We had someone say, we always cook with your olive oil. Yes, okay. Well, hopefully that means that we have been educating people. I, I, in my mind, if you aren't willing to dip that olive oil and eat it by itself, some people say, oh no, I, I get the lower quality olive oil to cook with and then I'll dip with the higher quality stuff. Well, if you're not willing to eat it just with a piece of bread, I don't know why you're willing to eat it in one of the items that you're cooking that's going to bring down the quality level of what you're cooking. So cook with high quality items and you're gonna get a higher quality, uh, you know, uh, yummy delicious recipe at the very end of it. So that's, that's my thought about it. Okay, tomatoes in. Aha. They're gonna get cooked in. And splattering and then we've also got these guys so the tomatoes are cooking up I've got ooh, the onions I took the, step. the onions are going in too and the onions are cooking um, until they're kind of the um, timekeeper so cook cook until you see the onions get translucent and then that's the the time where you can toss in the the rest of the bits and pieces and the eggs so we're making sure that the onion isn't raw or crunchy. We've got the tomatoes in there, so they're gonna get that great flavor of the basil and the onions together. Mmm, this is when it starts smelling good. Okay, so a little bit about onions, because uh, I sliced them up earlier so I wouldn't be all teary for you guys. Did you know that uh, a few ways to kind of dodge the, the stinging of the eyes a, to cool your onions, so keep them in the fridge, and that's going to uh, keep the, the splatter and the, um, the effects of the chemicals out of your eyes more. So keep them in the fridge. Use a super sharp knife that is also going to stop the splatter of the, those bits and pieces that are going to be able, that are going to get into the air. Um, there's, again, old wives' tales. There's always those, those tales of... Um, putting a piece of bread or having the goggles and that sort of thing. Um, the best bet, I, if, if you're a Food Channel person like I am, you'll always see that they'll cut the onion in half and then place it down. So the face is down, the round is out. So put the sliced piece away from you and then slice. So that means that anything that was going to come out into the air is now covered up and then slice. So, those are a little bit, uh, a few, few ideas on how, or outsource it to somebody else and watch them and laugh. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got this going on. Yes. So I was looking at Italian foods and um, frittatas and Italian food. Um, and the Italian frittata is a nod to all of that. Of course, all those great Italian flavors. Um, Pizza margarita, which is one of those pizzas, the, the, the only trustworthy pizza for any kiddo out there is the pizza margarita. So margarita is um, the mozzarella, the uh, basil, and the tomato. So that, that type of pizza was actually created for Pin Margarita in Italy, and it was a nod to the Italian flag colors, the green, the red, and the white. So it's a little, I don't know, little history lesson for you, a little food history lesson for you, and a, a reason why. So if you're at a pizza place and you want your kids' brains to get a little bit bigger while they're running around and getting crazy, we'll teach them a little bit of, little bit of history. Okay, so all the other friends are jumping in now. So the spinach, the garlic, it feels like a lot of spinach when you toss it in. Really, you could probably see it kind of trying to jump out again. Uh, spinach disappeared really quickly, so you, you're putting it in thinking, oh gosh, okay, she's lost it. Um, it will kind of shrink down to a point that you'll go, oh, okay. My kids won't freak out. They won't think it's a salad. Um, 
On the flip side though, this is a fantastic way to get kiddos to eat their veggies. Slice up mushrooms, slice up bell peppers, anything that in any other format would gross them out or apparently you know, throw them off the building. This is a fantastic way to get them to eat their veggies. Because there's some great flavors and there's a ton of cheese. So the minute you put a ton of cheese in there, every kid is all over it. Garlic is going in. So the reason that I have a prepared frittata for you to look at and to see at the very end is because this whole process is going to take a little bit longer than, as, than longer than we want to keep you for. So once we plop it into the oven, it's going to be uh, about 15 minutes to cook in the oven, um, and we want to make sure that we give you guys, we let you, we let you go at a decent time, and we don't just hang out with you for the whole day. Although I wouldn't mind it. It it's quarantine. We haven't got anything else going on, so. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just want to make sure that we show you what the end result is. Okay, yes, question. Did you saute the garlic before adding? No, so the garlic just goes in with everybody else. Um, the only thing that's kind of pre-cooked or, or cooked beforehand is that, or first is the, the onion so that it gets translucent. Everything else goes in once that onion is translucent. The tomatoes do really well and you cook them with the, the onions so everything cooks in together. Um, but the um, garlic is, Again, I'm cheating, I'm not using fresh garlic, I'm using the jarred garlic. So if you were using the fresh garlic, I would suggest maybe cooking it down a little bit. Uh, but it is going in there with everybody else right now with the olive oil, so it is cooking down a little bit before it goes into the oven. So hopefully that helps. All right, I want to follow along here. I often jump, so I wanna make sure that I'm sticking with you guys. Um, all right, so we're adding the spinach, the garlic, the tomatoes. Then we're gonna be pouring the egg mix in and we're going to be cooking on the stove for five minutes before we put the parmesan and any type of Italian sausage or pepperoni you want and before it goes into the oven. So uh, we've got this mixture. It may have kind of settled a little, little bit, so it might be a good idea to make sure the salt is off the bottom and everything is stirred up. Um, these guys are looking great, so I'm going to take, and by looking great, I mean, look, you can't see the escaping uh, the escaping of spinach anymore. The colors are fantastic. So you are getting that Italian uh, flag coloring with the bright tomatoes. And I, I would say you could use diced tomatoes, but those cherry tomatoes look so beautiful in the finished product. And it is kind of nice to bite into a, a nice juicy tomato while you're going through the eggs and everything else. So it's just kind of uh, a different mouthfeel as you're eating. Um, but you could do diced tomatoes. I just, I think this looks prettier and for the final product works out better. Okay, so I'm kind of gonna spread everything out a little bit and then I'm going to toss this guy in there. Okay. So <laughs> this is when you find out whether your pan was big enough or not. <laughs> Is everything jumping out or is it still good to go? All right, so um, we're going to be cooking this for a little bit. We're watching and waiting to, to see the sides kind of separate a little bit from the center. So the center is still going to be wiggly, but the sides are going to be starting to show a little bit of a cooked side. So looking more like scrambled egg kind of style versus wet egg. Uh, so we'll cook that up, and then from there, we're going to take it, plop it in the oven, and that's all she wrote. Well, some more cheese and some more meat, and then that's it. So it's a really easy, once you get frittata concept down, like, it sounds difficult, it sounds fancy, everybody in the pool, everybody in the pool, unite the pools, cook them up. That's it, that's all we're doing. So it ends up being super easy, and again, the finished product, you can then slice up and it's going to be like a slice of pie, savory pie. So you're not just, okay, this is going to be a one meal situation. You can bring this on a picnic. You can bring this out for a potluck. Uh, it's a beautiful um, 
uh, set up for, for brunch, of course, and it's something that you can easily pull together and put to the side and then set up your mimosas and start, start drinking your mimosas. That's what brunch is for, right? Uh, so yeah, all of that, easy to do. Once you've got it figured out, you're, you're set. I've got it kind of on medium-ish heat, just eyeball it. Um, medium heat seems to work across the board. I had it cooking for a little bit longer, the first one that I tested out a while ago, and the bottom was a little bit brown. So you want to make sure that you're not overcooking the bottom part, um, and you're keeping, because again, kids don't eat anything that's mildly dark in, in coloring because it's poisonous, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, you want to make sure that you got it low enough that uh, it's not going to burn up the bottom as well. Um, I've got a little bit of a bubbly thing going on, kind of like a hot lava magma volcano thing going on in the skillet, and that's exactly what I want. Um, the sides are starting to kind of curve a little bit, so I'm sure that's probably what's happening with you guys, um, and that is showing that the sides are starting to cook up, and that's going to help out before we toss it into the oven and keep it a little bit more, um, thicken it up a little bit so when you do put the parmesan on top, it doesn't just sink right down to the bottom, it stays on the top, same with those, uh, the pepperoni or anything else that you use on the top as well. So um, I, we, I was talking to some friends about um, renaming, rebranding uh, food at home, the in-home rebranding that parents do for food to get our kids to eat food. Um, one of my friends said that uh, her kids won't, wouldn't eat meals at all, so if you call it breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it was a no-go. But if you called it a snack, they were all over it. So every meal became a snack. We were just going to put out some pancakes for snack in the morning, and then maybe put out a PB&J for snack. Uh, so yes, question? Oh. Um, and. I thought it was hilarious because I had a friend that was also, <laughs> she had uh, meatloaf and they called it uh, bunless burgers because it's just the burger part and it's okay. It's not going to poison you. You like burgers, we're just taking away the buns and you can eat it. It's not meatloaf. Uh, another friend said <laughs> that her friend or her daughter doesn't eat anything but chicken. So everything's chicken now. Fish sticks, no. Chicken. Everything's chicken. So I, I think about that and I think, I wonder what I ate as a kid that I didn't know I was eating. <laughs> I'll have to check in with my mom. Mom, if you're watching, are you lying to me? What was I eating? I told you I didn't like mushrooms. I do now. All right, so I think we're all set to plop this into the oven. I'm going to take the parmesan. And I got the flakes, but you can do the, the shaved if you want to. We're sprinkling that on the top. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, sprinkling, sprinkling. I'm going to turn off the heat. We don't need the heat anymore because it's nice and cooked on the sides already. There we go. And if your kiddos are, are good around heat and know to stay away from the pan, this is a perfect thing to help out with. There we go. Everybody, need some cheese. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to put on these guys. I think that just finalizes it and makes everybody think, yes, this is definitely pizza. This is absolutely not healthy. There's definitely not like spinach or healthy stuff in there. There's absolutely just pizza. Uh, yes, question. Um, I believe your mom said I'm watching. Oh, mom. See, I bet you were, you have been lying to me about a few things. It's I, I didn't know this was a thing until becoming a parent. And you just, survival is what it is. You need to get that food into those kids however you can. Ooh, somebody was saying that they slice up um, cauliflower really small and cook it up with olive oil, which sounds amazing, but they call it um, cauliflower popcorn. So there you go. You put popcorn, you put pizza. There's certain key nugget. If you call anything a nugget, that ends up being good. So you just have to learn the lingo of the kiddos and just plop those in there. If anybody's creating a restaurant and needs a kid menu, I just helped you out. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take two hands, two pot holders, so that I don't dump this everywhere. Live TV! Just kidding. Um, and I'm going to pop it in. 
the oven. Can you guys see this at all? Can you see this? Ooh, that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking for. Uh, still a little bit watery. Perfect. Toss that in. Doo -doo. Warning, will be hot. And then 15 minutes. And what you're doing when you take it out just to test it, finger, spoon, test that middle, it should just bounce back. Shouldn't be watery at all, should bounce back. And then you'll be good to go. When you serve a slice, I've got it kind of in the bowl, but you're taking this, I'm gonna slice this up for you guys. Let's take a slice. Slice it like a piece of pie. Get a plate for you. Hey, it's like I'm hosting you. Come hang out with me. Let's grab a something. Ooh, speaking of grabbing a something, guess what next week is? It is a perfect transition because we've been doing a lot of stuff with kids lately. And what is a perfect transition after dealing with a lot of kids? Cocktail hour. So we'll be doing happy hour next week. Same time, same place. Uh, we're working with Cowwise, which is a local distillery, and they're fantastic. You have probably been seeing their hand sanitizer a lot of places. They've been doing a fantastic job of making sure that everybody has clean hands. If you're not able to wash, sanitize. Maybe do both. I think both is a good idea. Um, but they are just a wonderful local distillery, and we're going to be working with them. All right, so this is... This is your setup right here. Gosh, there you go, see? And then you're just going to drizzle that balsamic, and this adds a little bit of sweetness on there too. So you, if you have picky kids who are like, ah, you know, breakfast isn't complete without a little bit of sweetness to it, that will actually help out with that. Yes, question. Um, just a note, next week we're gonna be using basil, lime, and rosemary with Calwise. Oh, basil, olive oil. Hey, you guys are set, this is three weeks in a row. I hope you were following along last week because you were coasting at this point. Lime olive oil, one of my favorites because I do a lot of Mexican cooking, so that lime olive oil is in a lot and also fantastic for cocktails, as they'll show. And then that rosemary is, rosemary can do no wrong. Rosemary is my, I think probably my best friend in olive oil, olive oil uh, land. Uh, and uh, so that's great that we've got those three. Thank you for letting me know because that is a great setup for the next one. So basil olive oil, lime olive oil, rosemary olive oil. You can always hop onto our website. We're always gonna have that bundle for you so it's super easy to just push a button and go. Um, we'll also have those recipes. Anytime there's a recipe that's needed, that'll either follow up right after the show or it'll be there hopefully, you know, we can try to get to you before the show so that you can literally be following along and making cocktails with us. You know it's my favorite thing that we can all cheers together. If you've seen any of our distillery shows, you've seen that I love cheersing you guys and the distiller, and I think it's so amazing that we get that one-on-one -on -one, um, attention uh, to see how it's all created. Um, it was mind-blowing. Before working here, I would think, olive oil cocktails, I don't know. And now, I, it just, par for, I just, I think it's the most amazing thing. It's, I would like to say it's a little bit healthy for you, so it's adding some health to your cocktail. So, um, you know, taking care of your heart while you're having your happy hour. Uh, so yeah, go onto our website, the bundles will be there. Go into either one of our tasting rooms and we'll have that bundle there for you. So you can just push the button or come in and give us a holler and we'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and then look in your cabinets because if you've been following along, that means that you probably have some of those goodies with you already. So um, once you have, start, Buying these bundles you'll see how they kind of roll over to the next week you'll see how they work um, with other recipes that we post on Facebook on Instagram as you know this is goes live this is live on Instagram we try to keep it on Instagram we try to then move it over to Facebook and also YouTube um, so if you want everything in one place hop onto our YouTube type in Paso Olivo click subscribe and then you're going to be getting, you can look through and see all of those cooking recipes that we've had. We have a bunch of great how-to recipes as well. So uh, you can check it all out. You can look for, if you have the basil, what else is using basil? So you can do that as well or follow through and see, okay, I see this, I really wanna make it. 
I'll buy that bundle. So um, a lot of great ways to expand your knowledge and your cooking skills and kind of branch out from the norm right now. I know that we're all kind of stuck in ruts. So this is a fantastic way to kind of branch out and do something fun. Um, so I get to see you guys cocktail hour next week. But for now, I think we're pretty much set. Let me bring this over so you have the eyeball of the uh, basil olive oil again. There we go. Um, I think we are set to go. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today, guys. I hope that you enjoy your frittata and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Okay, guys? Bye. Thank you for sticking with us. Bye.